I think I might have made a mistake. Howdy doody folks, hope you're doing well. Welcome to another 4321 video. We're back in a minute and preheat my oven. Yes, 4321, the playlist where it's four, three ingredient recipes to try one time in your life. I forget what number we are up to, but you guys are loving the simplicity of this. I try and stick to the three ingredients as much as possible, and then you guys add the creativity. We try and do a starter, main dessert, and a drink, a whole medley, a platter, a fusion, a dinner in one video. And normally, 12 ingredients. Sometimes I tweak it a teeny bit just to add a bit more, but then you guys take it up a notch, and I'm like, oh, oh. I absolutely love this playlist as much as you guys do. It is a dark day today. My fence nearly blew down a minute ago as well, but that's another story. Uh, we have got a sparkling berry drink. We've got a chorizo hash. We've got a mushroom and chicken bake. It's gonna be amazing, that one. And finally, my actually most favorite one out of all of it, is some baby baked Alaskas. I don't know if that's gonna work. It should, but let's find out. We're gonna start with the main meal first of all, the chicken mushroom bake, and you can make this so flexible. The first thing you need to know is if you're using a meat, so we're using chicken breast, which I shall start placing in the dish now. These are just some standard chicken breasts. You could use chicken thighs, you could use ones with skin on, you could rub some herbs and spices into it. I'm scouring it in there, but you need to get it cooked first. Make sure you cook whatever meat you're using first before we add the other two ingredients, which I'll show you in a bit. That's why I preheated my oven, basically. All right, that is a hot old oven. This is going in. We're gonna bake the chicken for about half an hour, but if you wanted to, yeah, what you could do is actually put it in a griddle pan. You could cook the chicken up to sort of scorch it and char it and get that sort of mild sort of smokiness and depth of flavor to it on the outer edge. I'm not really wanting that because we've got, kind of got like a mild flavor going on with this, but you could do that. So we can't really do much whilst that's in the oven away, baking away. It's actually really low hassle, that thing. So we're gonna do the starter now. We've got the three ingredients here and to make it more exciting, I've got three shapes. So this is gonna be our hash, which is actually gonna taste just as good hot or cold. And you can even serve a poached egg on top if you want. That'd be really nice. Uh, we've got some chorizo sausage here. I've just got to slice a few more uh, pieces up like this. So this is just um, some spicy sausage that you get in the supermarket, but you could uh, use standard sausage if you want, or I was gonna use pepperoni. Um, ideally something that emits some sort of oil because that's gonna help flavor our other things. Yeah, because we're not using oil, we're preying on sort of this. Don't know what that was. <laughs> to help like flavor and also lubricate and cook. To sort of be the, the yeah, the, the oil from, you know what I mean. So we've got the circles there and this is some potatoes. We had a batch of potatoes that we cooked up last night. So these are already cooked. We had some spare. I was like, can I borrow those? And Mrs. B was like, what? I said, just trust, just trust me. So uh, these have uh, been chilled in the fridge actually overnight, but they're already cooked and I just sliced them into cubes. So we've got circles. We've got cubes, and this uh, is a courgette, aka a zucchini, that I've halved uh, and then halved again to get triangles. So we've got triangles, squares, and circles, all the shapes and all the colors. But the sausage does get a little bit of time on its own to obviously cook through, kind of like the chicken theory again as well. There we go, flame straight down, and we'll just keep this moving around and uh, waiting for those oils to appear and then they can join the party with the other stuff. There you go. You hear that? You see that? Look, it's hard to see with the pan because it's dark. There's those oils. Once it's like that, the oils are released. Get the other bits in there, all right? Keep mixing it. See the oils staining the potatoes? Yeah. All right, I've just taken this off the heat because I am happy with it, but I just want to show you like some of the uh, potatoes. We've kind of really pushed them to that char level for that flavor I was talking about earlier. So the oil's working with it as well, but it's kind of got like a baby roast potato vibe. We've done the same thing with the courgettes as well. They've kind of softened and caramelized too with that. So it's all flavor. You can serve it hot like this, but I'm actually gonna let it cool down a little bit and go back to my chicken. Cause, well, because it's cooked through, but it's basically, baked chicken, which actually is, is nice on its own, but pretty boring. Yep, let's change that. Now these are in the freezer aisle. It tends to be like in the stir fry section, mixed vegetables and all that. But in this particular one, I didn't look at it properly. What have I got? I've got rice, peas, rice and peas, sweet corn uh, and broccoli. Now I chose this today. These are normally microwave by the way, but don't worry about that. I chose it because it's got the rice in it. I don't know if you you might spot from this playlist so far, what I've been trying to do is make sure that a meal is a meal. It's not like, oh, add pasta or add chips. Like this with the rice now in there, it's a whole meal. All right, so we scatter that in and all of a sudden that looks very different. I'm just gonna sort of hack at it. 
Not bad. Not bad at all, but do make sure you get any big clumps out. Loving these baby bits of broccoli. That's awesome. It's like Baby Yoda if I knew what Star Wars was. I know that Baby Yoda exists. Just don't really know what he is yet. I will soon. I've got here some tins of cream of mushroom soup. So we're proper going for that chicken and mushroom vibe. Now you can get cream of leek, you can get cream of chicken and mushroom, you get cream of tomato, you can get so many more. And also, as we saw in a previous video here on the playlist, you can get a chunky soup that can actually provide the vegetable intake. Get those big hearty chunky soups and you could chuck that in as well. Amazing. But the soup, oh yes, <laughs> is effectively gonna become our sauce. So as it warms up, it will sort of soak through. It's gonna cover the chicken, so that's not gonna get burnt on the top. I was thinking then we could add cheese to this, but is that gonna go with it? You could do that at the end, like just do one little bit for like a cheesy topping, but nah. So in that goes, I've kept the uh, oven the same temperature. I'm gonna give it about 20, 25 minutes to really properly warm through and obviously make sure the rice is cooked. It's normally a microwave one anyway, but microwaves can get hot. So you know, if you wanna bake it even longer, just put some foil on top. And if you do wanna do that cheesy thing, uh, you would put the foil on and then the last 10 minutes or so with your cheese on. I ain't doing that, so don't even know why I'm talking about it. All right, so we're gonna do the drink now. And I like the idea. I was gonna actually, I think I even tweeted this, that it was gonna be a smoothie. It's not. Don't tell anyone, okay? It's not. I'm gonna change it to kind of like maybe a sparkling drink. And I feel like the rules with the three ingredients for a drink, water should possibly be allowed a little bit. So depending on how this goes, I might add some sparkling water at the end just for a little bit of pizzazz and fizz and maybe some ice, all right? But the three body ingredients is just fruit. <laughs> Over here is a chopping board with some punnets. I love that word, punnets, of fruit. Uh, they're just washed raspberries out of the three probably gonna be the most sharpest, so we'll use a little less of those. But other than that, you can wing it. So all I'm gonna do is take my blueberries, ooh, some grapes, these are red ones, seedless. Let's say just a couple, not as much of the raspberries, like that. And we've still got loads left over here to garnish with or even make more, but that's, that's kind of nice and full. I like that, look at that. If you want, you can do the whole Tom Cruise in cocktail thing, or you can just be normal. See, even the bits, I don't know if we get a bit closer. Maybe I should have sexy lens that, but all the little bits there, oh, the skin of the grape has been shredded. Keep doing it if you want, if you find it fun. I'm gonna taste it. I can tell I've not done this before. If it's too concentrated, because that is a lot of flavor in there, we will break it up with some ice and maybe some sparkling water, but we'll see now. Oh, that's blooming gorgeous, that's amazing. I was gonna say, you could add a little sugar in there. That does not need it. Wow, I think the raspberry thing was a good move. All right, so let's fill this glass with ice. Ah, oh, my hand's bruising. And then we just pour. Oh, look at that, did you see what it did? It kind of diluted the minute it hit the ice. Oh, lovely jubbly. I'm gonna do it. I feel like it just needs a little bit of lightning, even though with the ice diluting eventually. Oh, I love that. Oh, I love that contrast. And then what we can do is get a few raspberries, some more blueberries, and a grape or two. Oh, oh that's gonna taste amazing. Oh, it's starting to get like a little skin on top. I'm gonna keep pushing that. It probably is cooked through, but I just wanna see if that adds a little extra sort of texture and flavor to it that we can break through it. It might not. Now, the only downside is by doing that, as you know, I've only got one oven at the moment. Uh, this one down there, we're just waiting for it to be repaired. Now, this last dessert, um, you bake it in the oven unless you've got a chef's blowtorch, basically. So I'll tell you the steps on that when we do the torching bit, which is fun. In this bowl, we have some egg whites. All right, darn good whisk. Oh, look at that, <laughs> until Tim Peaks form. And I've just weighed out, so, oh, <laughs> missed the bowl a little bit, brilliant. Uh, this is about 100 grams of caster sugar. So just add that in, in thirds. Boom, look, nice and glossy. <laughs> it's holding it really well. Of course, to double check, you can turn it upside down. Oh, hey, see, over a friend that you trust, head, and they don't mind. Look, it's happy. To be honest, I've no idea if this is gonna work, but it could be stonking. This is a plate, and this is a, a Bargain Dars, a well-known brand of ice cream. They do these baby tubs. <laughs> Can't even get the seal by. Uh... Instead, yes, we 
shall. <laughs> yes, yeah, stage one of my plan is okay so far. Oh, look at that. Look, they, they do the little ridge there, so it doesn't actually start there. That's the actual ice cream you're getting. Oh, you crazy people with your budgets and targets to hit. Brilliant, right. Get that out as a sandcastle. I've got vanilla caramel brownie flavor there. I love it. Now, this plate has been in the freezer. This has been in the freezer, but if you're not doing it immediately, keep it in the freezer, but maybe take it out of this packaging first. What we're gonna do is just apply a thin layer of the egg white meringue mixture all around, okay? Now, if I was using my oven, which is still in use, you'd actually put it onto the grill setting, or the oven would do it as well, but you'd only need to put it in there for like 90 seconds, two minutes roughly, because it can catch so quickly. You could leave the top like exposed like that, but I'm gonna go for it. I'm gonna put a dollop down like that to seal by uh, it all in together. I actually think that I might be solely responsible for sales of seals Kiss from a Rose increasing by 0.1% in the last few months. So there we go. Now, if you want to get a bit crazy with it, you can grab yourself like a bamboo skewer and sort of pull out little spikes like this. You don't have to do it. It can just make it look a bit more funky. As you get like sort of swirls in it, you can pipe it on as well. If you've got like a piping bag, use a different nozzle. You can get a really cool effect like that. So you can put it in the grill for two minutes or like this, you can go around and start torching. So all we've done is encased our ice cream block or sandcastle in some charred meringue. Now, guess where that goes? Yes, keep it in the freezer unless you want to eat it straight away. Uh, just before I get the chicken bacon out, this is just a little idea I had. I've stuck the hash stuff uh, in, it's probably to, better to have done this while it was hot, but into a ramekin. I'm turning it upside down. I guess I've kind of got inspired by the uh, Alaska now. And maybe it might fall a bit, but <laughs> yeah, it's a funky way of serving the hash, I suppose. But I've just given it a little bit of a tidy up and that is a big pile of stonking. All right, I've just looked at it and it's got a heck of a skin on it, a little bit when you make rice pudding. I like the skin on rice pudding. Some people hate it. I might skim it off, I don't know. Let's worry about that in a minute. Oh, yes. It does look a bit like rice pudding, actually. It smells brilliant. Very chickeny and mushroomy. Very mushroomy, actually. I've just got them all spread out for my uh, thumbnail. It's amazing how I've got the mix of like red hot and the things that I want to keep cold. And then this thing, which is cold, that can be hot. This the mix of smells coming out is just phenomenal. I am. It's probably one of my favorite ones, actually, so far. All right, I'm interested to see. Oh, actually, it's not too thick a skin. That's all right. There we go. Oh, look. You got the chicken and the rice underneath it, and you can scrape all this up. I have to go over there because I've got, <laughs> of all things, I picked up a slotted spoon, but wow. I might just stick another chicken breast in there as well, but that should be super tender. Yeah, I mean, granted, it's not the prettiest looking thing. Oh my gosh. Oh, you can just shred the chicken as well if you want. Oh, you could even buy rotisserie chicken that's pre-cooked. It's not the prettiest thing, but that is filled with flavor. And you can't get much easier than that. Let's taste it all. All right, I'm just breaking the mountain up. Mm. That is unbelievable. There's the saltiness of the chorizo in there, the smokiness of that there. You've got the charred edge on the potato, but then you break into the softness and a slight squishiness and caramelization with the zucchini courgette. That is so good. And cold like that, it's brilliant. So it's a real good thing to make ahead. Let's uh, freshen the palate. I think I might have made a mistake. It's lost that buzz. By adding the sparkling water in there, you've got a little bit of tang, but I think the ice, it was enough in there just to sort of take the edge off that. Cause you've got, hang on. <laughs> it's kind of solidified. Come on. Yeah, that's enough. But when you dilute it too much, you're kind of taking that edge off it. But then of course you might like it like that. You might want a subtle flavor. So play around with it. I think, Possibly for the first time, cheekily adding a sparkling water ingredient has backfired and I should have just left the ice. But remember, you haven't got to be as rigid like this with me. Just play around with it and you'll love it either way. Win-win. Right, <laughs> it's a bit of a medley, but I've got my chicken here, I've got my soup, my sweet corn, my peas, my broccoli. Oh, I don't know if I just went, oh, like a posh, oh, jolly good chap, tasty. That is really nice. Very sort of warming 
and comfort food. The rice is in there padding it out. You got a little bite of the veg as well, but that tenderness of the chicken, that is gorgeous. I'm gonna actually use this way more. And as I said at the start, as I was going through with it, play around with it. You could do a lot with that. That's brilliant. I don't think the skin's essential. Just make sure it's all cooked through. I wanted to get up close for this. Baby baked Alaska before, and hopefully it's a little bit melted. Oh, baby baked Alaska after. <laughs> Amazing. Oh my gosh. <laughs> I mean, you gotta remember the main body of it is some ice cream of your flavor of choosing you want, but that torch, scorch edge around it just adds a little sort of smoky, almost like campfire-esque taste alongside it. Not that I'm suggesting you eat a campfire, but that is phenomenal. Another 4321 video in the bag. Remember to check out the rest of the playlist if you've missed them to date for loads more inspiration. These are really good budget recipes that you can adapt and tweak, give you confidence in the kitchen, whether you're a student or just learning to cook for the first time, or sometimes getting some new ideas. You guys love it as much as I do. I'm actually blown away. I can't pick my favorite one today. All I know is with the amount of ice cream I've got left, I'm gonna have some very happy kids. Check your level player. No matter what your style, the kitchen's for me. Simon's most, dash, go, teat, maybe all three. Well, just to show you, this is what I'm doing, just getting them baking parchment, keeping them in the freezer. Right, makes it easier then to stick them and do the grill method. Mm. That good, guys? Yeah, mine's like toffee. Yeah. toffee I'm not sure what flavour you got. like salted caramel. Oh, nice. You might have the posh one, Clay. And oh, it, good. It looks like it's got like a pancake on top of it. Brilliant. Three ingredient pancakes. <laughs>